All right, whenever you're ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another angel got its wings. <laughs> <laughs> Hydroforming gives you a lot of unique advantages that other forming methods don't have. We can, for example, we can pre-polish the blank, coat it with plastic, form it up with the plastic covering the polish and leaving that shiny surface so we can peel off the plastic after it's formed and you get a nice, not 100% polished part, you'll have to touch it up, but it gets you about 90% of the way there. We have a rubber diaphragm pushing oil that protects the top side of the part. So it's pushing down while the punch drives up. So you're not getting that metal on metal grinding. If you look at a stamping part, you'll see scratch marks going down the side. And for some you know, basic commercial products, that's okay. If you're making a part for say a lawnmower, that's okay. But if you're making something that needs to be visually attractive, having that rubber on the outside during the forming process gives you a much nicer finish. We can form variable thickness of material. Okay, now in this case, we actually machined this in the flat. We took a piece of metal. Uh, this, this is probably a stainless. So we took a piece of stainless that was this thick, a plate all the way out, and we machined this thickness so that we could form this up. So if you look at the inside, the ID is the, the shape of the tool. But the OD, the outside, is the machined metal. Our press doesn't care if there's variable thickness, thicker in the corners, thinner on the sides. Our press doesn't care if there's variable thickness in the material. Stamping can't do that. With hydroforming, we would do an initial form where this goes straight up, this comes out, this is the flange. Okay, but then the hydroform can, with pressure, form this back at a negative angle. You can't do that with stamping. So with the same tool, we can form this up and then wrap this around so you're getting that negative angle. Stamping would probably have to form the part straight up and down, and that's a pretty massive tool. So this is another interesting advantage that we have in hydroforming. We can combine, with one tool, we can combine heat treating into the process. So especially on aluminum, when you're heat treating aluminum, it causes it to move. So when we form this up, we will short form it, not to the final height. We'll heat treat it in our NADCAP heat treating facility and then come back and re-strike it. That re-striking it causes the material just to stretch just a little bit, locking in the shape for the final specifications of the customer. So I want to show you the difference between stamping and hydroforming as far as tooling costs. In stamping, you have plates, you have posts, you know, there's springs involved. There's a lot of activity going on and a lot of cost of building die sets to, to fit inside the plates. With hydroforming, we just have a ring and a punch, and I'll show you that example. So here's a good example of a hydroform tool. You basically have the punch that's the shape of the part. This will be the ID of the part. And then you have a ring that the punch fits inside of. There's a hole in the middle of the ring that's the shape of the punch. So when it's in the press, the punch is lowered to the level of the ring. The material is put on there, and then the punch drives up while the bladder pushes down on the part. So we only have a ring and a punch versus the stamping die that has all the other expenses of the plates and the posts. This type of work, we call it form block work. You're basically taking a form block made out of aluminum. It has a couple locators in the center of the part. You put it on there, the pressure of the hydroform bends it over. The reason you wouldn't press break this is because there might be a joggle in the part that causes a different shape. You can't do that on a press break. But the, the cost of this tool is very minimal to where stamping would have to build, again, the whole die to do this thing. So whenever you're doing a form block type of part, hydroforming is a huge advantage. So to take this one step further, on the fluid cell press, we can actually make the tooling out of plastic, which has a lot of advantages. This machine's like butter, but also a really cool thing is, once you start to lubricate it, it soaks up the lubrication and allows the material to flow a lot better. And the plastic lasts surprisingly long. So this is a great option, especially when you're looking at low volume type projects. Hopefully you found this deeper dive look into hydroforming interesting. Hopefully you learned something that you can apply to your product. 
But if there's further questions that you have, leave comments for us, email us, call us. We would love to talk about your situation and get deeper into the questions that you have. Even getting our engineering groups together and discussing. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. Everybody has special circumstances. That's kind of what separates us from the other high performers. So thanks for watching. We really appreciate your view.